Today, we're going to be talking about Copilot a little bit. Um, and we're going to show you what Copilot is, and especially Copilot X that we were releasing a few weeks ago. First of all, I want to thank Plain Concepts for the organization, as well as the gold sponsor and the collaborators. We're very happy to be here. And we hope that you find our session exciting and that you learn something new. Um, I'm going to let my friend introduce himself today. So, hello, I'm Tug, coming from France. So this is why we do it in English today. <laughs> and I am solution engineer, working closely with Margarita. And my name is Margarita. I'm the technical partner manager, meaning that I work with our partners from GitHub site, make sure that they're ready to go with you, with our customers, and you know, release everything that we have available with GitHub today. I'm also coming from Microsoft, so I've been working with the Microsoft technologies for, for some time, uh, but now moved to the dark side. OK, good. So Copilot. I'm pretty sure that you already know what Copilot is, right? We've been hearing about AI for so long. It's like a trend topic. Um, and what's the key differentiator of GitHub Copilot, right? Like, what, what are we trying to achieve? What are we pursuing here? Well, first of all, what we have in mind, we want to make sure that we're increasing the developer productivity, right? One of the main questions when talking about Copilot is, is Copilot going to eliminate any of our you know, positions of my peers? That's not the case. Copilot is not meant to you know, substitute anyone here. It's meant to increase the productivity. It's meant to let you have your own time to invest in innovation stuff, in things that you enjoy and move faster rather than reducing you know, workforce. Also, accelerate innovation. By reducing the time you spend on doing some of the manual stuff or even the more repetitive actions here, we're allowing you to spend more time in innovating and doing things that are more playful for you. And last piece is bridge the skill gaps. So today, I'm not sure if you agree with me on this one. I feel like GitHub is today the LinkedIn for developers where you, um, you know, want to understand a little bit what's the background of a developer, you may probably go to his or her GitHub profile and check what are the different projects that that person has been contributing to, where are the different projects that has opened, languages that has been working with. Our aim here with Copilot is in combination with the rest of the GitHub enterprise, make sure that we're creating a bridge um, for those new developers or people that want to learn a new language, make that easier and faster for them. Because you will have a copilot, you will have someone next to you that's guiding you, that's suggesting you stuff, that's helping you at the end of the day. So how does copilot work? Just baselines here. Basically, copilot is offering suggestions. So it's going to learn from the context. And context here means not only the comments and the prompt you're working with, but also the open files that you have in your IDE. And that's very important. Like Copilot is not learning from anything that you don't have open. It's not going to check any other data. It's not going to check any of your files, any of your folders, if you don't have them open in your IDE. That's key. It's going to learn from that, and it's going to generate suggestions based on that. So keep in mind that you will need always to review that. It, there are just suggestions. It's a copilot. It's someone that's next to you helping out, but it always needs someone reviewing it and confirming and accepting those suggestions. From a data flow perspective, that's something that we've seen uh, many of our customers asking us about, right? What is happening is I'll have my IDE open with the different files that I usually work with. Again, something important. It's going to learn a lot from that and my way of working and my way of coding. It's going to track that context. It's going to pass through some filters that we have available, like um, security quality, like authentication, et cetera. And it's going to generate those suggestions based on OpenAI. And then it's up to the developer to decide whether he or she accepts the suggestions or denies them. That's basically what's going to happen. And um, important as well is that it wants, especially for Copilot for Business here, like the version of Copilot that's available for enterprises, all the context that has been used for the generation of the suggestion is at the end of the day deleted. So we're not storing any customer data. We're not using that data to train the model. We're not taking any data from the customer out of the IDE. And uh, what kind of IDEs do we have available today? We have, we're supporting VS Code, Code Spaces, of course, Visual Studio, JetBrains, and NeoVim. So we're trying to make sure we're covering most of the you know, more common IDEs our developers are using today. 
but also it will be that in the future we'll have other IDEs available. In that case, it will be those IDEs actually integrating with our Copilot solution. And just to finish this piece, so what's the difference? Like, what are we making available for enterprises? What's the difference between that um, Copilot for developers and Copilot for businesses? Well, for businesses, we're applying like different controls and settings that will make enterprises will make enterprises life easier when it comes to working with Copilot by enforcing policy controls. They have that blade where they can control like how licenses are being assigned, how are they being used, etc easy to assign users, and they can also filter public code matches. That's also another question that we get a lot from customers, whether um, you know, if they're going to see their code suggested to their competitors, that's not going to happen. They can even filter that. And I'm going to end with Copilot X. Um, what's the difference between Copilot and Copilot X? That's a very, very asked question. Copilot X is nothing but Copilot and how we see Copilot in the future. It's just a vision, it's the next generation of our product, but there's nothing like a Copilot X product itself. We're always talking about Copilot, but this is the vision of the future of Copilot and what the teams are working on. And with this, I'm gonna move to the fun piece. Thank you. So, the best way to learn about Copilot is to view it, to use it. Uh, some of you may have used it already. And um, I will use uh, VS Code and uh, IntelliJ on different programming language to show you how Copilot works. And I will start with a very, very basic use case just to set a scene. I am in VS Code. I have my extension installed. I am connected with uh, GitHub.com for authentications to check that I have the permissions to use Copilot. And my, an imp, a very interesting part is you can use uh, Copilot without having your source code in github.com. This is very important. You take any of your project and you can use Copilot because in the ID is just based on the content you have. For example, you see this specific project is not in a source control yet. And you see at the bottom of the ID, you have the Copilot logo. And when I will start to use uh, my keyboard, Copilot will be there helping me. And this is a very important part, right? It's your assistant. It's here to help me as a developer. So what I will do is I will start with a small command, kind of doing some prompt engineering about explaining what I want to do as a developer. And I will do, I want to, in, to use Express in my application. So Express being an OGS framework to do uh, a web, a web application. You see in gray, I have what we call the ghost test text. This is a suggestion coming from Copilot. Every time GitHub Copilot will suggest something. In this case, it, it believes so far that I want to import Express itself. No, what I want is I want to describe what will be the next lines. So for example, I want to create an app and use port. And here again, it will suggest something, 3000. Because when you use Node.js, most of the applications are using the 3000 port. This is where you can see that the model has been trained on everything that is public on GitHub.com, suggesting the default best practices. So I will say I don't want to use for, uh, 3000, I want to use 4000 or use environment port. So I want to use an environment variable. This is just explaining what I want to do. Return, I get a suggestion of one line of code, tabulation, another line of code, tabulation, another line of code. And you see here, it automatically gets the context. And this is a very, very important part about Copilot. When you are inside your IDE, everything you do, the context you have, the IDEs, the tabs that are open, are used to feed the context that are used as a prompt when we send the data, the suggestions to, to get the suggestions to OpenAI services we have in a GitHub tenant, getting back the suggestion. What is interesting is most of the time, you don't change the way you are coding. Here I'm talking a lot, so it's waiting, it's waiting. But the key part is now I have a context that Copilot knows that I am using an Express application. I will do return, return, and it will suggest something. 
this specific command, most of my demonstration, I will have a different import. This is generative AI, so statistically, it will, it will use different import. What I want to do here is just to say create root, to say hello to name or default, default, default to Madrid. So what will happen again? Guessing in the context, I am in a express application. This is how I expose a, a REST API, closing the functions, getting the information. And you see, it's guessing, it's suggesting some code for me. I could have done it differently. I could have done it that by just coding the functions as usual. So I will say this. Let's say I want to say hello, name. So depending on what you like to do, you don't have to change the way of coding. This is you are in control of what happened. And you can say default and so on. What is the next step for my application? Starting the server. I will do this. Start the server. Wait. Done. I could have, so I have a first version of my applications. And you have different way of coding. You want to create a function. Functions, get, get, prime numbers. I will wait. It, give, it will give me an implementation. And you have different way of working with Copilot. Here I stay in the editor. You see, I didn't do anything beside tabs, waiting a little bit, tabs, and return. You have some shortcut. If, I, if you go in Copilot, uh, uh, in the shortcut, you see you have many of them. One of them is open completion panel. So I will do this from here. So let's open the completion panel. It will give me 10 suggestions. So this is good because it gives you an idea about how you can implement something. You, so it taking, it's taking more time, because you, you will see it will suggest more code. And I have multiple implementations that I can choose from, or not. I can just look at it and continue to code the way I want. So this is why, when I use Copilot, I go less and less into Google and Stack Overflow, because by using this, I can find some ideas about how I want to implement. Everything that I showed you so far, it's GitHub Copilot, as you know. What I will switch to, I will switch to another project where I will show you how Copilot chat. So it's part of the next version. So we have a technical preview. You just have to wait the, join the waitlist if you are a Copilot user, and you will get access to it. So I am in the Java application. So the conference is called .NET, and I'm talking about Java. So excuse me. <laughs> So I will show you something with C-sharp, but I prefer to use a language that I know. <laughs> with Copilot, you can start to do stuff with uh, other languages to learn, for example. What you see here is I have Copilot chat open. I've not yet used it. I've not used it yet. But more importantly, from my pull request inside GitHub, so this project is inside GitHub, inside my pull request, I have my security tools raised an exception that a vulnerability that I have a risk of SQL uh, injections. I'm taking this as a simple example. Code is not clean, uh, but it's to give an idea. How do I fix that? Just ask Copilot. I will select the code, right click, Copilot, explain this. So Copilot, we analyze uh, selected code, thinking on give you a little bit like what you do in, in a chat GPT, but it's not ChatGPT. It's Copilot. So it's inside the context of your ID. It's only communicating with GitHub. And you don't have to copy past source code. We don't keep anything from, your, from uh, your source code when we do the suggestions. And if, like me, you don't speak English, you can say in Spanish. This one, I will trust you, right? Because I don't know. <laughs> so. If you, not, if you need some more uh, detailed information, you can use. So this is the power of OpenAI GPT that know uh, how to speak and understand many languages. So let's go back to the coding part. If you look at it, we have a small shortcut here saying uh, you can do stuff with slash. If I click slash, I have some explanation about what I can do inside VS Code. What I want to do, I did the explain. I want to do fix. This one will look at the source code, 
analyze what could be done to improve the source code. And you have different options. So in this case, it's, if we look in detail, it has used a different way of working. So let's accept this one, because I want to show you other things about Copilot that are quite interesting in the way you work. So it has changed a query to use a, a prepare statement, so a different way of working to avoid the SQL injection. By doing this, you will have a different approach. What I want to do now, my, my function is not very clean. We don't have any documentations. We don't have any comments. We don't have any exception catching. Same, you can ask Copilot to do this. And you have another shortcut. I will show you again with Copilot. Copilot. If we look at it, we have here ask GitHub Copilot. So this is to ask Copilot to look at the source code uh, that you are currently selecting. So I do this. Oh, no, I do. Up. I do this, and you see I have Copilot coming just under my source code. So what I've showed so far, adding new code, asking questions, doing a conversation, but now I want to change existing code. Add, try, catch, block, add Java doc, and commands all line, including SQL, including SQL statement. So using the same kind of approach, you just think about what you want to do, and you ask Copilot to do it. So I have Javadoc. I put some commands. I have the try catch block. Obviously, depending of the logger you use, depending of the function you use, you, can, you will either guess based on the context, or you can influence the prompt by giving, I want to use this logger when I try catch, when I catch an exception. So let's accept this stuff. I will accept this specific part. So now I have a better source code. Two things I can do. I can continue to code my applications. For example, I will, part of my application, I have many queries or many uh, uh, operations I do. As you can see, as soon as you move in your source code, it will suggest something. Maybe not what you want. In this case, it's get the list of owner by owner ID. Let's see what it will do for me. I just wait on click tab. And what is interesting here, you see it's matching the code that you have around it. So it's lear not learning because I don't, it doesn't change the model, but it's take the context to code like you. And this is an important part. The I IDE extension will do that and will code like you. So if you have linter, if you have code formatting, if you have pre specific way of coding, it will do the same as you are. It will do it, do it the same as you do, sorry. So he added the Java doc, he added the commands, and I can continue to add stuff, and he will give me some ideas. So let's, for example, insert new pet in DB. He will do it the same way, uh, give me more or less the same statement. So always quite interesting. The very important part, you are responsible of the code. It's not an application code generator. It's to, here to help. A good example of that, you don't want to use a get to insert or to modify a value when you do a REST API. You have to do a post or a put. It's not complex to add, but you see that uh, uh, why well, doesn't do it, but anyway. So you, you see how, where I want to go. So the thing is, what I want to, you are responsible of the code. So this is very important to continue to run the CI, to continue to uh, automate. Take the, the gain you have in terms of productivity to automate more things, to add more security to check, to add more quality to your code. Because if you will, with Copilot, have more code, more pull, pull requests inside your application. So I was telling you that I can do stuff with uh, C Sharp. Let's do something. I have this specific method. I go back to the chat, I will clear my chat, and I will say, using selected code, convert it, it to C sharp. So it will analyze the source code, and it will give me, it will make me a suggestion about it. But if you are developing, you know that 
it's not very clean to, or it's not very clean. You have a better way at exposing a string of SQL statement. For example, uh, uh, use and hibernate. On the fun part is, I have no clue what I'm doing here, right? Is I'm just based on the commands that I had with people developing in .NET. They ask me, can I do this? Can I do this? And I say, I just ask. So the important part when, on what I said is, when you are working with Copilot, just try. Just try if you have an idea. It will probably help you. And if you have a, 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 an expert in the, situa in the framework, you will see what is good or bad, and you can improve the suggestions. You can continue to improve the code. And I had another example where, sorry, it's, I put it in the same project. I can do exactly the same as uh, with a, a small C sharp code, uh, where I have more or less the same kind of exceptions. Uh, so I will do this, copilot, explain. So it will be more or less the same process, and you will uh, look at the possible vulnerabilities inside the code, giving you some ideas about how to fix it. So it will, we should see that you have a risk of SQL injections. If I do fix, it will uh, give you some idea. So here we have two possible exceptions. One is about manipulating files. The other one is about SQL uh, injection. Same it will give you a better uh, uh, way of coding. Uh, and, and the key part is keep in mind that you are responsible of the code, so you have to understand what's going on. Don't accept without thinking. Don't accept without testing. Talking about test. Let's clear the chat. Let's go to my Java application. And suppose now I want to test this application. So you can do, using selected code, do test. So you see we have a specific command to create test. So it will suggest some test for your application. Testing, generating some data or not, depending on what you want. But the interesting part is it gives you some ideas about how to write the test if you don't have some. So it's a good starting point. You can continue then to a test, and I will switch back to another application in a minute. But for example, add a new test to see if my SQL injection is fixed. Since I work on the test to remove the risk of SQL injection, I should create a test to uh, be sure that I don't have uh, that is fixed. So let's see. Yeah, you see here. So we have a risk of SQL injection here just to test that it's working. If it's not exactly what you have in mind, it's OK. Just work in the editor with it. And when I work also, when you want to work on some code, so here I showed you in VZS code with a chat. I will come back to that in a minute. But when I work in IntelliJ, for example, I'm working on a, on a binary parser for, my, for one application. So I have to parse this kind of file. So I have a binary file to parse. This is GPS data that you, you, you use in a, a specific device. If you want to do that, it, you have to be sure you parse bytes by bytes. You are doing a, a deep test. Personally, I am not a TDD person. I don't do a test-driven development. I develop and eventually a test. Usually, when I was doing demonstration, I don't test. But with Copilot, it's so easy that now I am writing tests. And I will show you how. So I can generate tests with a chat. But always remember, because sometimes when we start with, to use Copilot, we are very excited about the chat. And we, we start to talk too much. <laughs> Keep in mind that your job, at least as an engineer, is to add new features, it's to add tests. The way I use a chat, it's really like if I was talking to an, another engineer when I have questions, when I have doubts. When I code, I stay in my IDE. So for example, if, when I'm writing the test for this application, sorry, I'm lost in all my screens. So I can do this. And inside IntelliJ, we don't have yet the chat integrated. So I will use something different. I will say add test for Speed, 10 seconds, 30 seconds. I don't, uh, I, don't, I, I don't remember if I have 30 seconds. But 500 meters, meter. 
So I have my t my all my t test case here. You see I have all my test case from the files that I know. I can do this and ask for the suggestion. So it's one way of working. So in this case, you see that I don't use this copilot suggestion a lot in Java because I don't know the shortcut. <laughs> but you have a shortcut if you want to access it. But I'm waiting for the suggestions, and it has generated some. Let's just accept some. So you see I have five, 10 tests that has been based on the commands that I put. So I have the 10 seconds, 200 meters, 500 meters, and so on. And he's adding one that does not exist. The thing that he remember about when uh, we talk about OpenAI, GPT, generative AI, sometimes we talk about hallucination. It will give you something even if it does not exist. Is it bad or is it good? I don't know. We have to check. You are responsible of the code saying it again. So I can do this, but if I, if I generate too much code in one step, you are asking me, or uh, Copilot is asking me to do reviewing code that is generated by a bot. Personally, when it's especially on the test, I really like to uh, do it differently. And just when I know exactly what I want to test, I will do this. Like, it will give me some advice about what could be the next possible test. Do the test, run the test, check, check the values, and so on, and continue. So this parser has 99% code coverage on, on this specific part. Um, what else? But it really depends on what you want to see from a demonstration. Some things that I, I used to do is, how can Copilot help me to learn a new language or a new framework? Uh, I was using, I was playing with Django in Python just to see if it can help. And it was very interesting because, you know, it's a model view uh, controller kind of framework in Python. And when you, once you have run the framework, you just kind of start to code. The name of the project is books. So Copilot knows that I want to talk about books. I will say class because I know that we have class from the documentations. Author, I wait, is giving a suggestion. I could ask a command, give me an author with first name, last name, email, date of birth, but let's do it differently. I will do it this, this way. Because I really, really like to highlight the fact that just continue to code the way you do it. First name, you see, you start to code, it will complete. It will guess last name. Birth date, I want date of birth instead of birth date. I want email. Two things that are happening. Look at first, it's guessing the name of the variables based on the context, but it's also allow me to learn about the frameworks by knowing which field, which frameworks, and so on. We have a bug here. Oh, it's OK. Let's do it. He will fix it for me. And let's do something else. Class, book. I wait one second. Wait, wait, done. So once again, you are responsible of the business. You know the business. Copilot knows that we are talking about author on books. But how many authors do you have on a book? Many, right? One too many. Here, it's only one. So from a technical point of view, it's correct. From a business point of view, it's not correct. So I didn't know how to fix that. And because I was kind of learning and I didn't want to go in the documentation, the only thing I did is I said, I need multiple authors. And it did this to me. So you have many, many places like that where it will help you to learn how to use a new language, a new framework. But you're still in control, right? You, are still, you still have to understand what you are doing. <laughs> I use also, and you can choose to use a chat or not when you do something. In, um, in my applications, I have a small application that I build where I, I use a lot uh, Copilot. It's kind of uh, the Strava, if you are doing running or biking, you know Strava, to share windsurfing sessions with friends. So I, I had to create these images based on a Node.js application. It's using Google Map and so on. To be honest, I had no clue what to do to generate this image in the back office, save it, create it. I say, why not opening a browser, going to the page, and do a screenshot? Which tool can do that? Playwright, Selenium, Puppeteer, and all this stuff. So I just went to my uh, favorite tool. And I say I will use Python, because I did this. 
I write a small comment. I could have done it in, in, um, in the chat, and I just say, give me some ideas about how to implement it. If you look at it, it's using Selenium on a Chrome driver in a, state, in a headless, go to this URL, resize, wait. In reality, so if I take the suggestions, here we go. In reality, at the beginning, I forgot to add headless. I forgot to add slip because it was uh, too fast, so the tiles from the map were not. But the good part is you just modify a little bit. So you do a little bit of prompt engineering with your uh, IDE. And we have a blog post on this uh, uh, that explain how to use some ideas about typically what I showed you. It's also very helpful with any programming languages or configurations. I will go back to the pet clinic part. Uh, it's in VS Code. It's, oh, I can, let me show you some, something with Angular first. Depending on my mood, I show different demos, right? So we have, uh, this is a hero, a tour of heroes. This is a sample code. When you learn uh, Angular, this is what you build. It's using superheroes. Let's say you want to add a new field. So is, you can ask uh, to the pilot here what I have to do to ask a field, but you know in which class to do it. You will do superpower. You will guess that is a string. You will go in the memory database. That is just a database that is used in memory when you want to do the sample. You select the source code. I add superpower. So it will modify my code automatically. And you have two parts that should be fun. First, it should add the, the code. I will accept. But also, look at the name of the superpower. It's guessed from the name of the superhero. And if I continue to code, it will give something. If I remove this and I say, now what I want, it's Batman. Let's say which superpower it will give is rich. <laughs> so it's also helping you, and you can add a command to say generate multiple code. Now I want to change my UI. By default, in this application, it's a list, and you have the name or the ID of the name on a route. Let's say I want to change my UI to say uh, use a table and add hero. Field. So it's one way will be this way. You know, you just take the code, you ask, and you will change the code uh, automatically. I accept. So you see, we have a header with name superpower. It's changed, keeping the route, keeping the superpower, the name, keeping the delete. It added some, uh, some other uh, field to the form. So it will always try to help. On, when you work on a bigger screen, when you work with a UI in, in live running your application, you will obviously see what happened. So mostly I show Python, JavaScript, C Sharp, Java, Angular with uh, TypeScript. What about, I will say legacy, it's not all infrastructure as code or legacy. Let's go back to this. So two things. You can also use it for all your CI, CD workflow. You do GitHub Actions, you do Azure Pipeline. It will help. You are doing Docker. You want to add a new uh, cache to your application. You want to use Redis? Just put the comments. It will give a suggestion. What is interesting or what is interesting to, to highlight, he use Redis 6. Why? It's because it's probably the most commonly used version. It doesn't look at which version of Redis sh should we use? It looks at what is the most common, uh, common version when you are doing a Docker Compose file. You know that, or if you know or you don't, but if you know that it's not the version you want to use, you will say Redis 7, map default port to 888, or yeah, 8888. Do this. The suggestion will change automatically. Same if you work with SQL statement. Let's go to the SQL database here. I will go to the schema. 
So this is a pet clinic application. You probably have seen it already in multiple frameworks. It's used a lot. So we have pets, owners, vets, and so on. Let's add, add a create drugs table with columns. In this case, I'm waiting for the name of columns. Obviously, you can define them if you want. It will generate the statement on the engine or the type or the foreign keys will depend on the file of what it's around it. Same if I want to say insert new drugs in drug table. It will create automatically some stuff. So it will always, always, always help you. And this is one of the most powerful parts of GitHub Copilot. Yes, you can find some flaws where we, it will generate some bad SQL statement or some bad code, but globally, it will code along with you. And this is something when you get used to, you will win a lot in terms of productivity. For me, I was joking about not writing tests in the past. Now I can write tests because it's not it's not too much work. And it's, we all know that it's very, very important. In demonstration, not that much, but in real life. And also, it will help you to write documentation. So I am in a markdown file. I will say, getting started with MongoDB on node.js. So I will do return, return, and, and it will start to give me some advice about what could be the, sh the chapter, or I can ask for uh, the suggestions. I can do the same in the chat, and you can give more information. Personally, I use, as I said before, I really use the chat about what uh, the way I want when I, uh, when I need some advice, when I need some discussion. If we look at, it has generated some code for me, giving some info. In reality, I use block by blocks, right, when I write my blog post and so on. What will be interesting, you see, you can add some code saying, uh, deploy the application to Azure Container. And it will do the same, right? Everything on your ID, as part of the vision, we have other stuff coming inside Copilot. One of them, it's inside your, um, your uh, shell. It's Copilot CLI. For example, how to create a new Angular or React app. It will give me some ideas. It will look at the comments, giving some documentation. So it's giving me what I can write. I can say also, uh, use Next.js instead of using this part. So we have part of the IDE. So everything is on your machine. And as part of the view of the, of the future, of the vision, we also have Copilot coming inside the pull request. So inside the, 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 the DevOps uh, step, uh, flow, I just do Copilot all, just to make it short. You will see, so I am in a pull request in GitHub, and you will see here, in few seconds, an application looking at the pull request and documenting the pull request. So this is a, a good example of what AI can do for the development, from the ID, adding new code, from the ID, conversation, fixing bug, writing in many steps. I show the CLI. We show the, um, the pull request. So we have uh, five minutes for questions. If you have no question, I will continue to do many demonstrations, so you should ask questions. Para, si tenéis preguntas, que sepáis que vamos a estar en el stand de Microsoft. O sea, que si queréis una demo, si queréis hacernos preguntas, vamos a estar ahí el resto del día. Gracias. Thank you.